Hey guys, welcome to Wednesday in the Word. And uh, we've been walking through the Psalms. And uh, we walked through Psalms 117. It's the shortest one. We walked through Psalms 118. And now we came up against Psalms 119. Psalms 119. And there's like 176 verses. It is the longest chapter in the whole Bible. It is 176 verses. And so we're not going to take that all in one bite, but there is some special significances to this psalm. Uh, before we get actually into the psalm, I want to give you just one historical uh, note, one factor that uh, it made me smile when I read this, but uh, George Weishart, who was the Bishop of Edinburgh in the 17th century, and Weishart was condemned to faith or condemned to death for his faith. But when he was on the scaffold, he made use of a custom that allowed the condemned person to choose one psalm to be sung, and he chose Psalms 119. He didn't, chose, he didn't choose Psalms 117. He went for 119 and said, before two-thirds of the psalm had been sung, his pardon arrived, and his life was spared. Thank God for long chapters. I just had to smile when I read that story, and I thought, isn't that, isn't that, uh, he was a wise man. He, well, he was not only a man of faith, but he was a wise man. He made good choices. Well, as we look at uh, Psalms 119, it is, uh, if you gave a caption, a heading to it, it would be the greatness and the glory of God's word. It is, uh, it is all about the word of God, the law of God, the precepts of God, all those things are enveloped in that and so and the structure is a unique structure uh, really only found one other place in uh, in scripture there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet and this psalm has 20 diff 22 different units and each unit is comprised of eight verses so each of the 22 sections is given a letter so th so each letter the uh, Hebrew al alphabet has one eight verse section and each line in that section begins with that letter so it's acrostic it's, it's just a kind of a whole word thing and they and it was brought together using all these different ones tied together about praising loving the word of god in fact uh the law the word the uh there's at least 171 of the 176 verses uh mentioned the Word of God. Now, in different forms, for example, uh, 25 times the law is used. Uh, the word is used 43 times. Judgments used 23 times. Testimony, the word testimonies used 23 times. Commandments used 22 times. Statutes 21. Precepts 21. So he's talking about all of these things. But the theme, and, and it's interesting too, when they say, who, who wrote this? They said, older theologians, who I appreciate, I think it was David, wrote this over a span of his lifetime. It wasn't just written at just one setting or one time. Not sure, but they pull it all together, and it's a variety of stuff, but it's all centered around the Word of God and our interaction with the Word of God and how the Word of God uh, touches and impacts us. In fact, uh, as I look through the uh, the history of it, um, it, says that Luther, Martin Luther, professed that he provides, prized this psalm so highly he would not take the whole world in, in exchange for one leaf of it. Uh, John Ruskin, British writer, William Wilberforce, who was the British politician who led the movement to abolish slave trade, Memorized it. These guys memorized the whole thing. Uh, David Livingston, the uh, pioneer mi missionary to Africa, memorized it. Matthew Henry, uh, his father Philip said, here, he said, take one verse a day and meditate on it. And in, in a year's time, you'll have gone through it uh, twice and it will, it will bring you to be in love with all the rest of the scriptures. And so, actually, Matthew Henry, some of you might know, he wrote a whole commentary on the Word of God. 
that he grew to be in love with the Word of God and understanding the Word of God. So uh, that gives you some of the overview of uh, Psalms 119. And when you look at it, you think, oh man, that's a lot of verses. That's a lot of stuff. Well, if you break it down into eight verse chunks, you can do it. And we're going to start off with the very first one. Verse 1, it says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no inequity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all of your commandments. So he starts off the very start. says, blessed are the undefiled in the way. So, undefiled, that means they, have, they are not stained. They have not fallen into the lies of sin. But they have kept themselves pure. In fact, Jesus talks about looking for a bride that is without spot or wrinkle. Undefiled and in the way, which would be, I believe, in when you talk about the way, that would be talking about following God, following in Jesus, who walk in the law of the Lord, who don't just know it, don't have a mental assent to it, but they actually walk in that path that's laid out in there. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Once again, following, living it out. And uh, the next verse, it says, who seek him with the whole heart. Um, to have a passion after God that encompasses everything you are. Jesus told the, the, the parable about the, the man who found treasure in a field. And it says that he went and sold all that he had and he bought the field so he could have the treasure. He also shared uh, right next to there, he said uh, the story about the man who found the pearl of great price, who went and sold all. So both of those would line up exactly with this. They, their focus, their heart, their passion was all about God. And, and I believe when you do that, that impacts you and that leads you right into verse 3. It says, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. He says, you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently, to follow your laws. You know, when Moses, um, I think it's Deuteronomy 28, said, if you will do these things, you will be blessed. If you do these things, you will be cursed. But if you will diligently follow my law, if you will walk within the parameters. So, um, you know, as you study who's happiest and whose lives go best, I can guarantee you people who follow the word of God and the outline that God laid down for us, how to live with each other, how to treat each other, those are the best. One of the reasons America's been so great is that, that we were based on those precepts and uh, honesty uh, and all those different things. And so uh, when you follow, and I believe that's why America has been blessed. We have been a uh, Christian nation. Not everybody has been Christians, but we agreed that the principles, the Judeo-Christian principles were what we would base our society on. Not everybody was a believer, but we all believed in that same set of precepts that God had laid down for us. Uh, he says, oh, that my ways were directed to keep your stat statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into your commandments. You know, you look into the commandments of God and you suddenly realize that you are a sinner, that you have fallen short, and that, uh, that Easter changed everything. Jesus came and he paid the price so that our sins could be forgiven. And uh, then you don't have to be ashamed. When you follow and walk according to the precepts that God lays out, you don't have anything to hide. You don't have anything to be embarrassed by. But you can walk boldly because you know that you have lived a godly life. And you follow those standards. And so uh, there's nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed of. So uh, I would encourage you to begin to read Psalms 119 and to study it uh, eight verses at a time. And we're going to walk through it in the next few weeks. But uh, if you're ever on the gallows and they're getting ready to hang you and you get one last chapter, 
119 is the one. Have a great day.